Dave Palumbo here from Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, I told you I'd be back. I got my purple shirt on today. And we're going into the snake room. We're just gonna take a look at some cool stuff I have. I didn't see any uh, new babies being born today or any eggs hatched. So we'll, we'll take the day off from that. And we're gonna just take a look at some of my holdbacks, some of the stuff we produce, some cool boa and ball python stuff. And we'll just call it a potpourri day, as I always say. I know you guys like those because it's kind of a little bit of that, a little this, a little of that, and everyone gets to see something that they actually like. So come on into the room. All right, a few people have asked me to uh, give them an update on my Super Pastel Super Panther Pied. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Super Pastel. It's either a Super Pastel or Pastel, and it's definitely Super Panther. That's the Panther gene coming from Freak Nut in the Netherlands, and that's obviously a Pied. The best way I can describe it is is a, is a darkly outlined rust colored pattern uh, broken up by obviously the pied gene, which is the white in there. When they were born, well, this, at least when this girl was born, she was almost like that rusty color was almost like a gray rust. It almost looked a little azanthic a little bit, but it had a little bit of flashes of this uh, reddish orange in it. And it's gotten better as it's got older, really. I got to be honest with you. I love the dark outline here. As you can see around all the pattern, it goes all around all the, um, the, the splotches of pattern on it have that almost like someone cut it with a rough edge. Here's the, um, the male. Once again, I think he's also, he, he might be a, a pastel super panther pied. You can see he's a little darker. He's not quite as faded as she is, uh, but also that rough, rough outline too which I think has something to do with that panther gene, especially in its super form. So these guys are putting on some nice size. That male will be breeding for me this next season. Female probably take another year or so. You know, these ball pythons. So far she's been eating and I've been keeping her in a small, smaller hatchling tub because they seem to eat. I, I'm almost afraid to jinx myself if I pull them out of here that they'll stop eating. So, so for, for now I'm keeping them in here. I'm just going to show off my little mascot that I named after my son, Logan, except it's a she. This is my albino 66% head, a xanthic carpet python. It was the first carpet python I ever produced. It was a one egg clutch, or at least one egg survived. It was a double head snow, double head snow. And this girl has seriously yet to eat. This is a 2017 can't let her go, can't let her die, because she's healthy in every, in every way possible. She's never bit or struck at anyone. She's like my instructional snake. I love her, she's got great color. She's actually getting really nicer. It's amazing that these snakes can grow on little crawler mice. And for years, for probably a whole year, she probably ate pinkies only. She had, I have to assist feed her. I've noticed the last couple weeks that when I put these uh, little crawler mice in, she's been killing them but she hasn't been eating them. So that's, maybe she will start eventually eating. I don't know. Like I said, at this point, I have so much time invested in her. That I can't bear to part with her. She's staying with me forever. So we'll have to just see how she does. I mean, she's growing. She's getting her nice adult colors finally after, after two and a half years, almost three years. She's got like these cool banded areas here that look kind of cool. She's getting more white in her. So I know, she's, she's good, she's a good, you know, I, I didn't think she had a tongue for a couple years, but she, I see tongue flicks, eh? you see the little tongue, tongue flicks? They're not big tongue flicks, but they're, they're tongue flicks, so. I don't know if maybe she's just a slow developer. <laughs> but she's perfect in every other sense. She doesn't have any kink tails, nothing. She just doesn't want to eat. I'm sure if she started eating, she would probably develop at an astronomically fast pace because the amount of nutrition she gets in per week is very, very limited because of the fact that she won't. That I have to assist feed her and you can't really put anything big down in the throat when you're assist feeding. This snake should easily be taking crawler rats by now on her own, but she's not. So we'll see, keep trying. There she is, Logan. This is my first clutch of the year. My GHI Mojave Clown, female I produced. She ate yesterday. I had an extra pinky left over, so I threw it in there. She didn't eat the first week I fed her. 
I'm gonna see if she wants another one. It's amazing how once, you know, some of them really start eating quickly, some of them take a little longer. You gotta remember when they're in the egg, and they come out, they have that yolk sac that they absorb, which could really last them a lot longer than people have to realize. They don't really need to eat. A lot of them just eat by instinct. Or they just strike out of instinct. She's probably not hungry. She had a, um, a little coral or mouse yesterday. And her litter mate, my pastel head clown up here, I'll show you her. She ate one also yesterday. She's been a good eater from day one. She'd probably eat that little pinky. Really nice looking pastel head clown. I'll definitely have her up for sale at some point. Nice looking baby. This is my banana pastel hurricane head clown male that I produced two years ago, 18. And he was in the lineup this year. He's bred a lot of females. Uh, whether we're gonna get any babies or fertile babies for that matter remains to be seen. Loved my hurricanes morphs. This was, I, I believe this was the first, world's first banana hurricane that was produced. And he's, um, once again, he was busy this year. So now he just got a nice rat yesterday. He's getting a nice break. Probably till the next breeding season next year. It looks like he's gonna shed. Just all kinds of crazy cool pattern. You know, hurricane isn't just a pattern mutation. It definitely affects color too. And head clown, if any of you guys know that, anything that's head clown, the pattern is always a little disturbed anyway as well. And I think so. I, I think it makes it a little lighter too, to be honest with you. So anyway, this little, uh, this little boy was, uh, was a star. Hopefully he performed as expected. A few people asked me, you bow guys asked me about my uh, Super Onyx blood that I produced two years ago. Once again, this is a really true dwarf locality. This male is, look how small he is. He's gorgeous. Gorgeous. You know, I was all pissed off that I didn't hit the um, leopard blood double visual two years ago when I produced my litter. This is really it, if you think about it. The onyx gene, the super onyx at least, and the leopard are very similar. They're not the same gene, but they're similar. Um, so I kind of hit, I mean, the super onyx blood is, is probably nicer than the leopard blood will be. <laughs> but this male will go into, I, you know, I, try, I was going to try to use him for breeding this year, but he's so small that he just like wasn't get, I think that, and once again, the onyxes just have to be older to breed. I think this coming breeding season in the fall, he will definitely be doing some good breeding for me, but he, he's tiny. He's, once again, if you're looking for dwarf boa localities, the onyx gene is just off the charts. I'm going to hopefully, I, I still have some I haven't put up yet from 19, but I'm going to definitely hopefully have some possibly two good litters uh, for 2020. So now's the time to get into this. I only wonder what it would have looked like if there would have been the hypo gene. Imagine hypo blood super onyx, I think would have been even more insane. But the, but the blacks in here really give it a lot of contrast. Look at that. I mean, look at that. It's just interesting. The reds just get really rusty darker. And once again, I'm a contrast guy. I have some really, really red snakes. I've shown them to you before, but this is just like a very interesting look to it. And once again, the super onyx is, is, is essentially loses all its pattern. It's got some of these little curly cues here. Blood gene is a little dark of a gene too. So once again, if you really want to make a super red snake out of this, you have to kind of add that hypo gene into it to really, or even T positive, to really lighten it up quite a bit. This guy is actually 66% head T positive as well. So that's encouraging. Probably breed him to something that's T positive blood and see what we can get. Just a little update. There's a little lavender clown update. She's uh, putting on some good stuff. She, I think she's going into shed because she didn't eat this week and she's been eating every single week and she's getting a little dark. Even her eyes are a little dark. Those lavenders are just, if sometimes when they go into shed, the lavenders come out even more. <laughs> Just, you could tell the difference between that and an albino. There's just a lot more contrast. There's that word again. A lot more contrast in the lavender clown as opposed to the albino clown. You'd probably see very little pattern because the 
yellows and the whites kind of blend together a lot more. So I have big high hopes for this girl. Hopefully we get her up to breeding size. I don't think it's going to be this coming season, probably the following. There's a nice leopard head albino male boa that's available. I showed him the other day. I think he just shed. Look at that. Look at those reds peeking out of his head. I just love this snake. I can't show it enough. I almost want to keep it. I just have so many snakes. I can't keep everything. This guy is awesome. He really is. I really like this guy a lot. Once again, he's on Morph Market. You guys can contact me if you want him. Now that was a um, leopard head albino. This is a double head leopard albino. Now you can see the head leopards are definitely visual. You can definitely, this is not a regular looking boa. You can see that the head leopard influence here. I always say they get the blushing red cheeks. They get a lot more darkness and, and interference in their pattern. So this is um, a double head leopard albino. Also a male, if you guys are interested, hit me up, just to show you the difference. There is a beautiful Paradigm Blood male that's available. He's so nice, I'm thinking about keeping him back as a, as a backup. I do have a Paradigm male that I'm using as, as, his, as a breeder now, that's his daddy. This is the Blood Gene, the recessive, and then of course the Paradigm is the Sharp Albino combined with the Boa Woman Caramel. They sit together on the same allele, a single copy of each, and you produce this intermediate paradigm. So instead of the albino blood, which is a really like whitish red snake, you get this light creamy, bloody look. And a lot of people think this is a, a nicer, more versatile snake because you can breed it to a sharp albino, you can breed it to a caramel, bow with a caramel, and you can produce both. So really nice, he is available. And this is a blood bow woman caramel. So this is not the paradigm blood. This is the pure bow woman caramel, which is a T positive line. And it's combined with the blood gene. So this is really a T positive blood. If this was, if this was a Central American, you'd call this the El Diablo. You know, you can see that beautiful belly, really nice looking female. This would make a great addition to anyone's collection if you're trying to hit those, you know, blood, albino, boehm and caramel, T-positive albino combinations. You can do a paradigm blood mixed to this and produce your own paradigm bloods and T-positive bloods. If you like the albino bloods, you can go with, with this and an albino, you know, or a double head albino blood. And produce everything essentially paradigm bloods t positive bloods and albino bloods really nice looking color i i'm pretty partial to the t positives that are combined with blood i really like the central american versions better because i because i think they're really really colored up better in terms of redness but the boa and caramel is, is is probably my favorite line of t positive in the colombians because of the fact that you can combine it with the sharp albino and you get that paradigm intermediate so, look at that face. Look how nice the coloring is on that. That's that Bow Woman Caramel Blood, double recessive. Just to show you a little diversity, this is, the, this is what we call the Phoenix. This is the El Diablo with the Hypogene, or it's the Honduran T positive, combined with the blood. Okay, just like the other snake we showed you, only this is the Central American version of it. Only this has the Hypogene, which is gonna bring out a lot more of those reds this snake was super fire engine red when it was born now i think it even has better color. look at the purples in there and stuff like that look at the, all that crazy diversity that goes on in the snake and i might even breed this snake to the super onyx blood thinking about it this snake i don't know if it's going to be ready to breed next year but then think once again the central americans this is pretty big for it this is like almost like a full-size adult so she'll probably be able to breed next season, or this coming fall, I should say. So look at look at that coloring on the snake. It's, it's just wacky. Central American dwarf bows, man. People who don't have aren't involved in those projects, you guys are missing out, man. You have to really get into it. And look, this thing is in a bow all python tub, and it will be there its entire life, and have plenty of room to spare.
And then just to bedazzle you, there's my Fire Opal, which is the Hypo Sharp Albino Blood. So this is, there's no t positive in here. This is pure Sharp Albino. Combined with the Blood Gene, you can see way more reds and whites in here as opposed to those browns and, and rusty colors. And obviously that Hypo Gene bringing out Bring it out even more. You can see the white outlining on the tail there that, that tells you that hypogene's in there. And just really nice coloring on the snake. This boy will be in the breeding program this coming season. Interesting thing is I don't have, this is my first albino blood and I produced them. So you don't need to buy an albino blood. You can make your own. I have double heads available. Hit me up. That's the way to do it. It's the, the cheaper way and the more fun way. I love living in Florida because when I walk outside and I'm on my driveway and I see a black racer snake, a jet black racer snake, look at that. I mean, how much cooler does it get than that, having your own snakes? And that's not my snake, that's a wild snake. Let me see if I can grab him. Oh, I'll never catch him. He went into the trees. Hiding in the tree. That's a real snake. I feel like, uh, there he is, there he is, there he is, right over there, on the ground, let's see if we can grab him, he's rearing up at me, oh, oh. I'm trying to get him, I'm trying to get him, there he is, he's looking at me, he knows I'm trying to catch him. love those snakes. They don't start out black. They get dark as they get older, but they're beautiful, beautiful snakes. I see them eating frogs all the time. This guy is a nice size one too. If I can just get a hold of him. It's hard to do when I'm filming. Look how fast this guy is. That's why they call them black racers. Super fast. Get away from me. Can't catch him. I'm not that fast.